Apple just released iOS 17.3 and it includes a major new feature that you need to enable as soon as possible. So in this video, you're going to see that new feature along with every other change. We'll also discuss the performance, the battery life, and if you should install this update or wait. Okay, so let's start with the most important feature in iOS 17.3 and that is stolen device protection. So you access this by going into settings, face ID and passcode, and then put in your passcode. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will see we have a brand new section here that says stolen device protection. And this is off by default. Now what this feature does is it adds an additional layer of security to your iPhone in case somebody who knows your passcode steals your iPhone. And if you think that this is uncommon, it is not. There has been a loophole in iOS for years that would allow anybody with access to your four to six digit passcode to see your saved passwords, to change your Apple ID password, to set a new recovery key, to pay for things with Apple Pay, to disable Find My, you name it. They could pretty much do anything just by having that passcode on your device. But now with this new feature, you are more protected from those bad actors and it's pretty much going to eliminate the threat of a snatching go, you know, theft of your iPhone. Okay, so all of that sounds great, but how does this actually work? And the first thing you need to understand is that this is based on location. And it actually says it if you read the small text below there, that this only works when you are away from your home or your work or whatever, you know, your iPhone deems as a familiar location. So it's really, you know, targeting when you're out and about. And again, it's called stolen device protection. You're unlikely to get your device stolen from your home or your work. So basically how this works is that when you're away from one of those two areas or one of the familiar locations, your phone will now force you to put in your face ID or touch ID and there will no longer be a passcode fallback. So like if your face ID or touch ID fails in the past, you would just be able to put in your passcode and access whatever you needed to access. But now with 17.3, that is no longer the case for certain functions. So let me give you a great example. So I have iOS 17.2.1 on the left, 17.3 on the right. So if I wanted to go in and see the passwords and I hide my face ID, you can see instantly it pops up where I can put in my passcode and then I can access all of those saved passwords in the iCloud keychain. Now with 17.3 and with the stolen device protection feature turned on, if I go into passwords and hide my face ID, you can see that it's not gonna give me a fallback. It's going to require me to put in my biometric as in face ID or touch ID. And you can see it says, stolen device protection is turned on so face id is required and that is just one scenario where this can really save you if somebody stole your phone who had access to your passcode as well but that's not it because if we do input face id correctly so we're going to go ahead and scan our face and it does do it correctly you can see that that is still not all we need it says security delay required to change password so if you are away from a familiar location like your home or your workplace you will have to do two separate face id scans or touch id scans one hour apart so you can see it says a security delay is required because stolen device protection is turned on it will last one hour you will still be able to use your iphone during this delay and the location of this iphone will not be visible until the delay has ended so now you can start security delay and it will show you how much time is remaining in that delay so if a thief were to steal your phone and they were going to try to change your apple id or disable find my or you know set a security key to complete completely lock you out of your Apple ID account, they would not be able to unless they literally had you and your phone for an hour in between, which is highly unlikely unless they are holding you hostage or something, you know, extremely rare like that. But if somebody is trying to just do a, a quick snatch and go, you know, they're not going to be very successful because again, you are going to have this additional layer of security here. So here's a list of all of these settings and functions where biometrics are required and there's no passcode fallback. And also all of the functions where biometrics plus a one hour delay are required. And again, you need to keep in mind that this only only applies to when you're not in a familiar location. Like for example, my iPhone, my main iPhone here knows I'm at home right now. So if I were to go to try to, you know, turn a passcode off or turn off, you know, stolen device protection, it's going to allow me to do that without any type of delay. And I could also put in my passcode as you can see there. However, if I were to try to do that on my other phone here, if I were to try to turn off 
you know, stolen device protection on a phone where it doesn't recognize my familiar location right now, it would not let me. It would show up with that security delay. So if I were you, I would turn on the stolen device protection feature right away after installing iOS 17.3 because we've seen stories of people who have stolen, you know, 300,000 plus dollars from victims by, you know, taking advantage of the loophole that's been in iOS for a very long time now, and that is what stolen device protection pretty much patches. Okay, so that was a serious feature. Now let's move on to some more fun features. And we're gonna start with Apple Music Collaborative Playlists. So these are here, finally, in iOS 17.3. And if you go into the library and go to Playlists, you will not notice anything new at first glance. However, when you go into a playlist and you take a look up top, you will see we have a new icon up there next to the download button with a little guy with a plus. And if you tap on that, it says that you can now invite people to join the playlist. So it says anyone with a link will be able to edit and reorder songs. Okay, so here's a look at one of my collaborative playlists. So you can see up top, we now have a new glyph icon with two people up there. And if you tap on that, it will take you to this view where you can see a share invite link. So you can now send a link to people or you can populate a QR code and have people scan that QR code by you know screenshotting it and sending it to them. And they can join that way. And then right here, we do also have all of our collaborators along with the username on Apple Music. So that is cool. But what's even more cool is that when you get into here, not only can anybody in the playlist add music, remove music, or also sort the music in here, but you can also react to music. So if I were to play a song, you can see that we have this little icon right here to the left of the favorite button, and that is a react button. So now you can react with these really cool, you know, fluid animations. If I do this right here, you can see we have a cool fire animation that comes out of there, and that pops up every time you go into the now playing view. So everybody will see that, and if you tap on that, you can see who it is that left that reaction. So if you have multiple people in a collaborative playlist, you can see who reacted to that. It's very similar to what you see in iMessage. And then you do also have the name of the person right up here. And also to the left of all the songs, you can see the profile picture for the person who added that song. And also when you go to add a song to a playlist, you will now be able to tell which playlist is a collaborative playlist because we have these two little gray glyph icons all the way to the right to indicate that it is a collaborative playlist. iOS 17.3 also includes a brand new wallpaper called Unity Bloom. So here is what that looks like. So if you go into your plus button right here, if you tap on plus when you go to create a new lock screen, you will see that right here under featured, there is a new little collection there called Unity Bloom. And if you tap on that, you can see we do have several different styles. So this is Unity, we have red, we have green, we have multicolor, which is really nice, and then we have a black as well. You can add widgets in there, but it does look pretty good without the widgets in my opinion. So we're gonna stick with the, we'll go with the multicolor for this one. We'll tap on add, we'll set as a wallpaper pair. We'll go to this wallpaper, and then when you swipe up, you can see a really cool, fancy little animation there going from lock screen to home screen that looks really good it flows very well now the next new feature in ios 17.3 is somewhat of a game changer but it's probably going to take a while for it to fully roll out and that is airplay in hotel rooms and this does exactly what it sounds like it allows you to connect your iphone to a hotel tv via a qr code and then airplay content to that TV. So no more janky Chromecast or, you know, no hardwiring your iPhone to the hotel TV just to watch something worthwhile. So this could be a real game changer once it eventually rolls out, but we all know how outdated hotels are. So it's probably not going to be in all hotel TVs until 2029. Anyways, LG is the first company to create a line of commercial TVs that are compatible with AirPlay for hotels. So expect those to roll out pretty soon, but again, they're probably not gonna be in every hotel for quite a while. This update also includes a pretty small but noteworthy change inside of our settings. If we go into general and then to the Apple Care and Warranty section, we have a change here because now it's going to show all of the devices that we have on our Apple ID account. So before in iOS 17.2.1 and previous versions of iOS, it would only show the paired devices under the Apple Care and Warranty section. So it would only show the devices that were paired via Bluetooth. So you can see my Apple Watch, my AirPods, 
things like that. That would be the only way I can see my Apple Care and warranty. But now in 17.3, you can see every device, even if it has not been connected via Bluetooth. So it shows like your MacBooks, other, you know, older Apple watches, other phones. You can see pretty much everything here. And the glyph icons for all of these have been updated as well. So they look a lot more realistic, especially the AirPods look a lot more realistic. So there are my AirPods Max. They are the correct color now. And they also just look more lifelike instead of more like a glyph over here. So all the icons, the AirPods Pro also look much better. As you can see right there, they used to be these gray glyphs. Now they are realistic looking AirPods Pros. Even the Apple Watch Ultra looks a lot better. So every glyph icon, it looks like has changed. And then we do also have some changes here. It used to say paired devices. Now it says more devices. And the sentence at the bottom has been expanded as well. It now says coverage is shown for devices connected to your Apple ID and select Bluetooth paired devices. iOS 17.3 also patches a bug that's gone viral a couple of times that would basically freeze any iPhone. And that has to do with the app library. So if you went into the app library here and then you tapped and held on the space bar and got to this section right here, and then swiped over in the middle of doing that and then you let go and go back into the app library and tap right here you can see it will freeze up the device and you will have to force restart it nothing will fix it so that worked all the way up until 17.2.1 but now that's been fixed with 17.3 so we're going to try the same thing so we're going to tap on the app library and then hold on the space bar we're going to keep holding and then swipe over to that screen let go go back and then tap in the app library and you can see it no longer works everything works properly now so for those who got a lot of views showing how to crash an iphone you're not going to get views anymore because it has been patched here with 17.3 oh and also included in this update are crash detection optimizations so this is likely just just in an effort to prevent any future false triggers like we've seen from roller coasters and snowmobiles and other things in the past. Now, as far as the performance goes, performance is actually really great here on 17.3. I've had no complaints really ever since the first beta. And now with 17.3, the final release, I've really not noticed any bugs. I've had no hiccups with the software. Everything has just run really well. I mean, better than 17.2, better than 17.2.1. I've just had no issues here and everything seems to be running just fine. You can see the latest Geekbench 6 scores here as well. Nothing too crazy, nothing too different from 17.2 or 17.2.1, but I can tell you right now, performance feels great. Everything on the device feels great, and it has been you know, the same situation. Everybody that has said the same thing here in the comments on YouTube as well. And then when it comes to the battery life, battery life has improved a tiny bit over 17.2 and 17.2.1, but it's not going to be anything major. So if I had to average it out, I maybe averaged 20 additional minutes over the previous version so again it's nothing major but if you were having any type of you know battery draining or any type of weird issues with your battery life those could be resolved here with 17.3 and you might find yourself getting better battery life on 17.3. So with that being said, should you update to iOS 17.3 or should you hold off and maybe just skip this update altogether? So I would say that for stolen device protection alone, for that feature alone, I would go ahead and update to 17.3. That feature could quite literally save you from losing your account, your passwords, your data, and even money. Like if somebody drained your bank account because they saw, you know, your password saved in iCloud, you know, and the keychain there, that's gonna, you're gonna really be kicking yourself for not installing 17.3 and having stolen device protection turned on. So for that feature alone, I say yes, it is worth updating to 17.3. Not to mention, if you're an Apple Music subscriber, you're gonna have access to the collaborative playlist feature, which is a major feature, especially if you have friends who also have Apple Music. I know a lot of people have been waiting on this for a very long time now. So that is also a big reason to go ahead and update if you are in that camp. So yes, I think for most people, it is worth updating updating to 17.3. Not to mention, I have noticed a change in performance and battery life for the better, although slightly, it does seem to be a bit better than the previous build as well, which is always 
nice to see. And then finally, let's discuss what to expect next from Apple and also what to expect next from my channel in the near future in terms of videos. So next up is going to be iOS 17.4 beta one. So we should see those betas dropping very soon for both developers and for public beta testers. But as far as the final release for iOS 17.4, the next, you know, major public release that likely will not be coming until the end of February or even into early March. However, in the meantime, I would expect to see a 17.3.1 at some point in February, just for bug fixes and security patches. So I would anticipate 17.4 being a relatively large update. We should see new emoji and usually the 0.4 updates from Apple contain some major changes and quite a few of them. So I would not be surprised to see that get pushed into March, which gives us more time to see a double point update like a 17.3.1. But who knows? Apple is, you know, all over the place these days. So that's why you guys keep it locked to the channel here. So you are in the know of everything going on in the world of Apple. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future iOS update videos along with other Apple reviews, including the Vision Pro. I will have videos on that as well. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.